unexpected dive. We have no hand trap in sight. Let's speed up this turn one, definitely. If Strena is tributed, we'll summon the Sacred Tree, which will monster negate. The Resurgent will spin back a monster the opponent controls. Strena is going to spin back a card in the graveyard back to our hand. Now, what did we accomplish here? Quite a lot. So, keeping Strena on the field is very good against cards like Dark Ruler No More. If they were to full field monster negate, you do have a way to tribute your Strena through the effect of your Princess to negate an opponent's monster effect, and then it summons another monster negate or a quick effect monster tribute. So the Strana is pretty much a waiting disruption, a delayed one that is. Resurgent could spin back a monster, she could steal a monster, Princess could negate a monster, Imperm could negate. We've got about five disruptions to play through, and it's Makanko, a deck built for going second. Let's go. RP Feather Duster, clearing up three disruptions. Oh, oh two disruptions, now we're down to three that is. So from five disruptions down to three, we are searching for our Ohime. Ohime is going to be negated by the princess, tributing the Strena, and now we have double disruption. We have Resurgence spin back a monster, and then whatever we summon with our Strena is gonna be our final disruption. Can we play through two? We do have triple tactics talent, Taking control of a monster, the Resurgent. Couldn't we just activate the Resurgent? Target an opponent's effect monster, spin it back if we want to. We're going to now summon Nini. Nini into Area. Area could summon a water monster from the opponent's graveyard, which will be a Petal. <laughs> okay. Petal summons during the opponent's end phase. So by stealing that Petal, you stop not only a body on the field, but it would also search for a Rika. Quite interesting. And is this card dead? If you control Makanko, we do not. We would be able to steal an opponent's monster or negate. So that is a problem. We we literally have nothing. We just have to survive. Virion is here, which will be our Omni negate. And we now got the Coliseum searching for another Borea for helping us with beatdown. We're gonna get beat down in. Lone Fire tripping itself to come forth and summon a Loki. Loki into the dry ass, dry ass in the extra monster zone. Only there we'll activate to search for the sewing. Borea equipping the healer. For more bodies in the field, 5,900 damage on the field. We're gonna be summoning the Mudan. Mudan searching for the Con Con. Con Con over the Disc Coliseum. Setting up searching for the Glamour. Glamour contribute an opponent's monster, which we are gonna do to search for the Snowdrop and another Borea. With that, we're gonna sewing into a Loki from the deck. Snowdrop tribute a monster we control to special summon the Borea and the Snowdrop. And now we're making the Dance Peon. Dance Peon is going to be special summoning up to three different plants off the top of our deck. We whiff it completely. We have none to summon. Resurgent, resurging itself back onto the field. Shokan into Melius. Melius summon a Loki from the graveyard. And with that Loki, we're making a Thrasher. Thrasher is going to be boosted by the Melius. 3,200 attack. Now making a Jasmine. And just like that, we are going in. The back row is not activatable. 11,000 damage on the field. And Resurgent finishes him. Let's go to game three. Makanko loses game two. So Makanko for game three against Rika even. Rika with one of the most powerful turn ones in the entire game. You're going to choose for them to go first? I, like you still do. You still do. You are so dedicated to going second that you would give the most powerful turn one deck turn one. And Makanko rightfully chooses to go second. With the choice go first or second, Rika is now popping off. And, you know, yeah, that's it. But it's still something. We could steal a monster. It won't negate the monster, though. It could stop it from activating. We do have a Princess in the Graveyard, which will negate a monster and it will be tributing the Shrena to negate, which will then be summoning another negate. So we have about three disruptions to play through, which is nothing for Makanko. Should easily win this. Pot of E is gonna be the first thing we do in main phase one. Randomly draw two. Give them the Kaiju, which is a tribute, which does trigger the Shrena to summon a teardrop. Teardrop will be quick effect tribute a monster on the field, and it is targeting. So if we can get Huey on the field with an equip card, then we can't be targeted. Hidden Armory is going to be sending a top card off the deck to be grabbing the water. Water is going to be equipped on the opponent's monster and then spin it back into the extra deck. 
just like that, you return it back to the hand to summon a Makonko from the deck. Triveting itself before that could happen, <laughs> it just killed itself. Or Hime is going to be searching for the fire dance, discarding a Nini. We're now going to use the Great Ceremony. The Great Ceremony is going to be summoning our Orihime from our hand. The Ceremony is going to be sending a Makanko card from the decks of the graveyard. The Makanko Dance is going to be able to reborn a monster from the graveyard. The Fire Dance is going to be special summoning from the hand. We're now completely untargetable. You cannot ricochet me. We are special summoning Nini with the effect of the dance. We are reflecting all of the battle damage. And just like that, that is enough for lethal. Spin back with a Makanko Dance. Triple 3300 for game. All the Makankos including the back row cards were untargetable. Cosmic Cyclone, MST, nothing could work. We're also indestructible, so no mirror force there. Well, I, at least two of them were indestructible and all battle damage reflected. Holy moly. Rika will go first, but that's what Rika wants. Uh, I should say that's what Makanko wants. They're okay with you going first. Hit an armory, mail the top card of the deck, searching for, oh, wait. Rika chose for Makanko to go first because they lost game two. <laughs> okay, let's do it. All right, searching for the water. So this is, it is targetable. So that is a problem here, but now we are untargetable. Huli will be searching for the trap. The rivalry could negate a monster or take control of a monster. So that does work out and let's go. Ooh, evenly matched, which means we're not gonna lose this turn. But they can still summon a hundred different negates. Yeah, this is a problem. Negate anything. Tribute a monster, but it's targeting. S steal a monster, but it's targeting. Non-target monster negate. And it could also non-target tribute a monster you control. So it's about five disruptions. Kaiju, it up. We're gonna be summoning the Hare, equipping the Makanko sword, and we're just gonna tribute it off the field. There's nothing we could do to stop this. That, it, yeah, Makanko gone. And now we just have a double-edged sword, getting boosted every time a card is tributed temporarily. We did get rid of the Therion, and we didn't even have to use our monster negate nor Ricochet. I mean, there was so much more we actually could have done. Strena is here, recycling a card in the graveyard, back to the hand, come back to me. Boria, Boria summoned for more damage on the field, over 9,000 damage, 13,000 damage. And just like that, not only has Rika defeated Purely, but Rika has also defeated Makanko. Rika is dominating the brand new decks today. What is going on?